Now at nine, as the Memorial Day weekend comes to a close, severe weather delays delays flights across the country. Americans are marking this Memorial Day by honoring fallen soldiers, but also taking some time to relax. I'm Madison Scarpino in Cornelius, North Carolina. More on that coming up. Plus deadly storms push through Texas, Oklahoma and Kentucky. We take a look at the aftermath. The four states most watched news starts now. Well, bad weather is hampering traffic as millions of Americans are traveling home this Memorial Day weekend. This is KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. I'm Tanya Bach. 29,000 flights have been delayed since Thursday. Nearly 44 million Americans were expected to take to the roads and skies, setting records this Memorial Day weekend. There were long lines Friday at airports across the country. TSA estimates more than 2.7 million people were screened. Well, Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty joins us with a first look at weather. Well, I hope you had a great Memorial Day. At least we got to calm down a bit outside. Finally, we got a day that was dry and we haven't seen scattered showers and thunderstorms across the region. Temperature is pretty good. Our average high now is 80 degrees. We made it up to 82. We started at 61 during the morning hours. Of course, no rain today, but we had quite a bit of rain in several spots over the weekend. For the month, we're at 5.4 inches of rain for the year 17. Average is 18, so we're about an inch behind, but that's okay because we're out of the drought now, and it looks like we're going to stay that way as we go through at least the next month or so, and then we'll see how the summer really sets up. All right, we're going to slide back through the 60s, 61 for a low, Back to 74 by 10, and we do have some rain chances in the forecast. We're going to look at that here in a bit. All right, thanks, Doug. Well, severe weather and deadly tornadoes over the Memorial Day weekend killed nearly two dozen people, including several children in Texas, Oklahoma, and Kentucky. Fox weather correspondent Max Gordon is in Valley View, Texas, with the latest. Storms shifting east Monday as millions traveling home on Memorial Day were forced to make their way under severe weather warnings in Kentucky. The state's governor issuing a statewide emergency declaration confirming there were several weather related deaths and that Sunday's severe weather and tornadoes left more than 174,000 without power. It could be days until power is restored because there was significant damage to the power infrastructure. Across southern states and into the Great Plains, the deadly storms leaving a trail of destruction, killing nearly two dozen people in Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Texas over the holiday weekend. I thought I was going to die for sure. North of Fort Worth, tornadoes obliterating homes and vehicles in the tiny farming community of Valley View, Texas. So we just ran back into the house, got into the bathroom, and got, I got my stepdad down. He's an older man, and got him down and my son down, and we just made it through it. It's crazy. At this shell station, dozens of people sought shelter during the tornado. I mean, it's I it just beyond idea. imagination what happened here. And after a challenging weekend for travelers, meteorologists warn the Northeast big travel hubs could encounter more significant storms into the evening. We could see additional severe thunderstorms here in Texas and into the Great Plains through Tuesday, complicating cleanup efforts. In Valley View, Texas, Max Gordon, Fox News. Well, this Memorial Day, four staters gathered at area cemeteries to remember lives lost as America honors military men and women who gave their lives in service to the country. And one of the Joplin area's most historic cemeteries, Mount Hope Cemetery, played host to a special Memorial Day ceremony this morning. The Web City ROTC Color Guard presented flags at the Mount Hope Wall of Veterans. Mount Hope General Manager Travis Boyd welcomed everyone to the event, saying it was their first service since COVID. Boyd expressed a special thanks to Charlie Tutu Outdoors for getting the event going again. It's, we can't put that into words. You know, we're, we're here honoring people that paid the ultimate price for us and sacrificed their lives for us. And how do you put that in words? You can't. So it's, it's extremely important. There's no way of describing it. Midwestern built Carthage joined other gyms around the country to commemorate Memorial Day with a tradition. KOM's Fernanda Silva tells us what the annual Murph Challenge workout is all about. Has anyone not done play? play. I'm actually kind of nervous about it, but I'm excited. So my thought is if I can just get through it all today, um, if I can even do that, I'll be happy with that. Happiness comes because the challenge is a big one. The event includes running two miles, 100 pull-ups, 
200 push-ups and 300 squats. The intense workout has a name, Murph Challenge. It honors Navy SEAL Lieutenant Michael Murphy, who died in Afghanistan in 2005 and was awarded the Medal of Honor. We are suffering through this workout to try to put ourselves through, through some sort of pain to kind of um, give uh, memory to, to what they went through. The sweat and exhaustion were clear in the faces of more than 60 people who joined the event in Carthage. How challenging is this workout? Uh, very challenging. It's about uh, 40 minutes to an hour and 20, depending on how long you do it, how, what you, how you do it. For Bert, an opportunity to work out, honor veterans, and meet friends. I just wanted to see all the gym come together at one time. We usually work out in classes, so I don't get to see everybody at once, so I thought that sounded fun. Uh, plus, Murph is kind of a famous workout that I always hear about. In Carthage, Fernanda Silva, KOAM News. Well, the money raised during the event will be donated to Allison Brown, a gym member who's battled cancer for the past two years. Coming up, health care for four-legged warriors. The U.S. Army wants warriors to get the best possible health care, including those serving on four legs. I'm Bradley Blackburn with a new partnership to help care for military working dogs. A U.S. Food and Drug Administration Advisory Committee is considering the benefits of a weekly insulin shot for diabetics. Most diabetics currently take a daily insulin injection to help manage their blood sugar levels. Novo Nordisk, the pharmaceutical company that makes a once weekly insulin product, is seeking approval from the FDA. During a meeting on Friday, the FDA advisory committee focused on the safety of the weekly insulin product for people with type 1 diabetes. Researchers are calling diagnoses of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder an expanding public health concern in the U.S. A new study shows about 7 million children, more than one in nine, were diagnosed with ADHD in 2022. That's a significant increase of about a million more children who received a diagnosis than in 2016. Researchers concluded the main reasons for the rise in diagnoses could be due to a more awareness of ADHD. Alternatively, they suggested it could be a reflection of poor mental health among kids during the COVID-19 pandemic. Well, even if your diet consists of 90% eating healthy and 10% eating ultra processed foods, there are still risk of cognitive decline and stroke. That's according to a study published Wednesday in the journal Neurology. The study looked at the diets of 30,000 people who've been followed for 20 years. Foods like prepackaged soups, french fries, store-bought cookies, and ice cream fall under the ultra-processed category. The study found increasing one's intake of ultra-processed foods by 10% raises the risk of cognitive impairment by 16%. Researchers say evidence suggests a higher intake of ultra-processed foods was associated with a 50% higher risk of cardiovascular disease-related death and even some mental health disorders. When U.S. soldiers are injured in the line of duty, they can count on some of the best medical care in the world. The U.S. Army wants military dogs to receive that same standard of care, and a new partnership with veterinary leaders is helping with that mission. Bradley Blackburn explains. Military working dogs serve on front lines around the globe, and now U.S. Army veterinarians are training on the front lines at home, embedding in Blue Pearl Veterinary Emergency Rooms. They spent three weeks rotating with our emergency doctors, our specialists, really to get their their hands on these cases, do some of the procedures that they may have to do when they're abroad. The partnership, which comes at no cost to the Army, gives military veterinarians 70 hours of online training and then real-world experience treating pet trauma before encountering it on a battlefield. In a combat scenario, the risks are that they would be a gunshot wound or there would be a uh, in the proximity of an, of an explosive device. Colonel and, Deborah uh, Whitmer uh, says some 1,700 dogs are working across the military. Their roles are essential and they're valuable, highly trained assets. They're what we call a force multiplier. They also create tight bonds with their human partners. Rarely do you see a soldier cry, but I have seen them shed tears and, and get emotional when talking about their canine partners. Absolutely. And it oftentimes is the strongest, biggest, toughest individual who has that intensely emotional connection. A new way to help all warriors get the best care 
even those serving on four legs. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. Well, a dozen military vets have already gone through the full pilot program, and they hope dozens more will embed with the Blue Pearl Hospitals in the coming years. Well, Doug is next with a complete look at your forecast. And later, let the summer fun begin as pools and splash pads open across the four states. Well, of course, it turned out to be a nice uh, Memorial Day for us today and Monday finally dry. We had fantastic temperatures outside. Let's check out our allergies. Uh, of course, they stay high this time of the year. Today was a 9.3 out of 12, which is kind of moderate high. Same for us tomorrow as we're going to be an 8.1 out of 12. So if you are an allergy sufferer, especially the grasses, that's the biggest one right now, you are going to be suffering as we go through the next uh, few days. All right, pretty much clear skies. We've seen this pretty much all day long for us today. Not a whole bunch across the central plains. Out to our west, you can see this little kink in our upper level flow. This is a very weak wave, but it's going to shoot down across southern plains, producing some showers and thunderstorms uh, across the southern plains, but we're going to be right on the northern edge. All right, let's go into the morning. Clouds increase. You can see a couple little spotty showers. Not a big deal. These push through, but hit and miss spotty showers throughout the day. Here's the noon hour. Better chances farther south you live, and then any spotty showers out of here by tomorrow evening. Tomorrow night looks fine. We drop back uh, lower 60s to upper 50s once again. And then on Wednesday, we have another back wave that's going to slide to our south. But again, I'm going to put in a very slight chance for a few showers, especially in our southern counties as we get into Wednesday afternoon. But a lot of you won't see a drop as we go through the next couple days. And then by Thursday, we'll be dry outside. All right, so let's get a little wider vantage point so you can see where these waves go. So here's tomorrow's wave down through Oklahoma and then Wednesday's wave down through Oklahoma and Texas. That's where any severe weather would be. Uh, we're not going to have any severe weather. We get a chance to actually dry out a bit and not deal with severe weather for a few days. 62 in the morning, 74 by noon. High temp, 78 degrees. Let's go into Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday because it starts to pick up again. Here's Friday. Showers and thunderstorms drive through a little bit stronger, so we want to watch those. Even on Saturday, our chances drop, but a few isolated thunderstorms. Then they go up again especially late Monday or late Sunday, Sunday night and into Monday, we're going to see uh, the thunderstorms across the region. So if we break it down, stronger storms Friday through Sunday, low severe threat, but it will be there. As we get into early next week, a higher severe threat late Sunday into Monday. And then our severe threat right around June 8th through June 10th. And traditionally that ends severe weather season. Then we go to MCS season, which are just those big complexes of storms that drive through during the overnight hours that we see in June and July. But a traditional severe weather season, we only got about 10 days left, 10 to 12 days left, which is good. 78 tomorrow, 80 on Wednesday, 80 on Thursday. Some thunderstorms back in Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. But temperatures pretty good through the period highs into the 70s and 80s. Perfect weather to head to the pool. Memorial Day marks the unofficial start of summer and what better way to kick off the season than with a trip to the pool or maybe even the splash pad. Schlanger Park Splash Pad in Pittsburgh brought out kids today for fun filled way to beat the heat. Some of those kids it was the perfect way to spend the day. So if you could have the perfect day for your summer vacation what would you do? Probably go swimming at the pool. That's fine by me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Schlanger Park will be open daily during the summer from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Coming up, technology is transforming the way travelers pass through airports. We look at how facial recognition waves are designed to get you through security faster. Join us. 
Millions of Americans have taken to the skies, hit the road, fired up the barbecue, and jumped into the pool to celebrate the start of summer 2024. Analysts are expecting Memorial Day weekend to usher in another summer of strong consumer spending on travel. The Transportation Security Administration said last Thursday was the second busiest day at airports across the country that they've ever seen. This month is breaking markets alone with five of the 10 most busy days at airports in recorded history being this month. An analysis from Bank of America further confirms the suspicion Americans are heading for a busy summer. It found over 70% of people surveyed said they planned to travel and over 35% said they've already planned their trip. Well, technology is transforming the way travelers pass through airports. Biometrics, including facial recognition, are becoming more common. It can make the process faster, but what does it mean for your privacy? Chris Van Cleve went to Los Angeles International Airport where flyers already have come face to face with this new tech. Before heading to New York, Maggie Burge experienced what could be the future of flying, using her face to check her bag. I think it works pretty well. And throughout Terminal 7 at LAX, many travelers are finding their face is increasingly their ticket to fly. Delta and United are now testing biometric bag check systems. At United, it checks a person's face against their passport photo, which that passenger stored in the airline's app. The airline says the images are not retained. David Terry oversees LAX for United Airlines. We're printing your bag tags within 15 to 20 seconds and have you on your way. Do I have to do this? So this is completely optional. At the checkpoint, both TSA and Clear, an optional service travelers pay to join, offer a growing number of facial recognition lanes aimed at cutting down time spent in line. International departures are increasingly using biometrics and expedited customs coming back to the U.S. TSA Administrator David Pekoski stresses the programs are opt-in. It's the future because it's so much more effective than a manual comparison. This is better for security. It will be better for efficiency. But not everyone is a fan of a facial recognition future. A push in Congress to restrict the TSA's use of biometrics failed earlier this month. There remain questions about how well facial recognition works on people of color, and privacy advocates remain concerned. The use of that sort of information needs to come with really robust protections. And that's really crucial when you're talking about your facial imprint. Because unlike a social security number or a telephone number, you can't get a new face. What do you say to the critics that want you to stop the biometrics? We put privacy first. We don't retain the data that you provide uh, for more than a few seconds. We have no plans to surveil and the technology is not capable of surveillance. So our use case is to verify identity full stop. That's it. A debate over the future of travel facing flyers more than ever. Chris Van Cleve, CBS News, Los Angeles. Well, if you're a fan of grilling out, get ready to dig deep. The numbers behind this year's pricey picnics and costly cookouts coming up. Well, if you barbecued this Memorial Day weekend, and we sure did, you may have noticed an uptick in prices at the grocery store. All the basics like meat, Hot dogs, buns, and condiments will cost you an average of just over 10% more compared to last year. That's according to Data Assembly. The biggest increase, though, surprisingly, relish, which cost almost 50% more this year compared to last year. Now, in some areas, a 32-ounce bottle of Heinz organic ketchup is selling for more than $10. Wow. 30 more minutes of news, weather, and sports is coming your way. A community in Missouri begins picking up the pieces after severe storms slam parts of the Show Me State. Plus, a grateful nation pays tribute to those who made the ultimate sacrifice this Memorial Day. You're watching the Four States Most Watched News. Severe weather slams the four states in the Midwest region ahead of the holiday. Now, one Missouri neighborhood is now picking up the pieces after a tornado. We go now for a closer look. Lisa Arndt says she and her family were having a laid back evening Sunday at home when powerful storms tore through the Melville area. All of a sudden, my husband screamed, run, and we 
grabbed the dog and ran down to the basement. But before that, I saw the water swirling around and hitting our window and all the leaves and tree branches and just kind of swirling around our house. This tree was snapped in half and tossed onto the road near Morningdale Place and Valleyside Lane. A lot of trees, a lot of trees in this neighborhood. It's a beautiful place, but yeah, it's uh, it's a mess right now. And the mess only gets worse as you drive down Morningdale. These two neighbors had some of the worst damage. A garage destroyed on one side and the entire left corner of the home next door was brought down to the ground, tearing up their backyard and bringing down the power lines. Katie Piles lives across the street. And then we heard a woof against the house and then all the doors opened because of the air pressure inside. Then we ran to the basement. After it passed and the rain was still coming down, everyone came out to check on their neighbors. And everyone's okay, healthy. The fire department came, checked and made sure everyone was okay. And the damage didn't stop there. Even further down the street, shingles were peeled off roofs, car windows were broken, more trees came down, and random things were picked up and thrown into people's yards. I've now inherited a kayak. So whoever is missing an orange kayak, they can come get that. Arndt says it's a miracle no one was seriously hurt. We were singing Send Me an Angel by the 80s band Real Life, I think it was, yeah. And I truly believe that we had an angel wrap their wings around our home. Wow. Well, the weekend storms also brought their fair share of hail and tornado damage to southern Missouri. Mountain View authorities confirm multiple injuries as well as downed trees and power lines. Well, that powerful storm system left serious damage behind in Bentonville, Arkansas. Drone footage from the town shows damage to homes, businesses, and the Bentonville Bike Fest. The annual event brings in thousands, and although no injuries were reported at the event, the area where it was held was destroyed with tents and booths toppled. The death toll from this weekend's storms is at least 21, with deaths reported in Arkansas, Texas, Oklahoma, and Kentucky. Well, as the nation observes Memorial Day, folks are honoring soldiers who gave the ultimate sacrifice for our country. Fox News correspondent Madison Scarpino has more from Cornelius, North Carolina. America is all about memories, and that's why we have Memorial Day so big. From coast to coast, folks are honoring America's fallen heroes on this Memorial Day. Elected officials and veterans groups making a big push to keep this a day of reflection and focus on the men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice. President Biden participating in a wreath laying ceremony before making remarks at the tomb of the unknown soldier. We'll never, ever, ever stop working for to make a more perfect union, which they lived and which they died for. And that was just one of hundreds of events focused on remembrance. There were parades, commemorations, and concerts featuring patriotic music, like this one in Houston. But of course, it's also a long weekend for most Americans, and that means plenty of time spent relaxing with friends and family, despite rain and colder weather in the forecast for most of the East Coast. We're planning to go out on the lake and have some hot dogs and some sandwiches and maybe get in the water. But even folks on vacation say they're taking time to reflect on the bravery and patriotism that are being celebrated today. It makes me happy that people were trying to honor the country so that everyone else stays safe. And that means a lot. And if you're driving to an event today, give yourself plenty of time. AAA expects this to be the busiest Memorial Day on the roads in over 20 years. In Cornelius, North Carolina, Madison Scarpino. Fox News. A bit later, healing through dance. Nearly two dozen veterans in the United States die every day by suicide. One New York City-based dance company is hoping to bring that number down. I'm Mather Avera with details on what they're doing coming up. Well, of course, it turned out to be a nice uh, Memorial Day for us today and Monday, finally dry. We had fantastic temperatures outside. Let's check out our allergies. Uh, of course, they stay high this time of the year. Today was a 9.3 out of 12, which is kind of moderate high. Same for us tomorrow as we're going to be an 8.1 out of 12. So if you are an allergy sufferer, especially the grasses, that's the biggest one right now. 
you are going to be suffering as we go through the next uh, few days. All right, pretty much clear skies. We've seen this pretty much all day long for us today. Not a whole bunch across the central plains. Out to our west, you can see this little kink in our upper level flow. This is a very weak wave, but it's going to shoot down across southern plains, producing some showers and thunderstorms uh, across the southern plains, but we're going to be right on the northern edge. All right, let's go into the morning. Clouds increase. You can see a couple little spotty showers. Not a big deal. These push through, but hit and miss spotty showers throughout the day. Here's a noon hour. Better chances farther south you live, and then any spotty showers out of here by tomorrow evening. Tomorrow night looks fine. We drop back uh, lower 60s to upper 50s once again. And then on Wednesday, we have another back wave that's going to slide to our south. But again, I'm going to put in a very slight chance for a few showers, especially in our southern counties as we get into Wednesday afternoon. But a lot of you won't see a drop as we go through the next couple days. And then by Thursday, we'll be dry outside. All right, so let's get a little wider vantage point so you can see where these waves go. So here's tomorrow's wave down through Oklahoma and then Wednesday's wave down through Oklahoma and Texas. That's where any severe weather would be. Uh, we're not going to have any severe weather. We get a chance to actually dry out a bit and not deal with severe weather for a few days. 62 in the morning, 74 by noon. High temp, 78 degrees. Let's go into Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday because it starts to pick up again. Here's Friday. Showers and thunderstorms drive through a little bit stronger, so we want to watch those. Even on Saturday, our chances drop, but a few isolated thunderstorms. Then they go up again, especially late Monday or late Sunday, Sunday night, and into Monday, we're going to see uh, the thunderstorms across the region. So if we break it down, stronger storms Friday through Sunday. Low severe threat, but it will be there. As we get into early next week, a higher severe threat late Sunday into Monday. And then our severe threat right around June 8th through June 10th. And traditionally that ends severe weather season. Then we go to MCS season, which are just those big complexes of storms that drive through during the overnight hours that we see in June and July. But a traditional severe weather season, we only got about 10 days left. 10 to 12 days left, which is good. 78 tomorrow, 80 on Wednesday, 80 on Thursday. Some thunderstorms back in Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. But temperatures pretty good through the period highs into the 70s and 80s. Let's keep as many 70s in there as possible. Okay, Doug, thank you. Well, coming up in sports, the Cardinals and Royals both play on the road this afternoon. John Dales has the highlights from both of those games and more up next. Hey, welcome into sports. I'm John Dales. A year ago on Memorial Day, the Royals had a record of 17 and 38, 21 games below 500. And on Memorial Day 2024, Kansas City enters the day with a record of 34 and 20. If the regular season were to end today, the Royals would be in the playoffs with a wild card spot. Royals at Twins on Memorial Day. Joe Ryan on the mound for Minnesota, and he causes KC some trouble in the third. Strikes out MJ Melendez on a foul tip. Next batter, Dyron Blanco. He also goes down swinging. And one batter later, Michael Garcia goes down swinging as well. Then gets thrown out over at first on the drop third. Ryan goes seven innings, allowing just one run, striking out nine. Into the fifth, Twins up 2 nothing. This adds to it. Deep blast off Alec Marsh. Three-run homer. Twins lead 5 nothing in the ninth. Two outs, Royals down by three, bases loaded, and Garcia hits a grounder towards third. Looks like it'll end it, but Willie Castro's throw way offline. Two runs are gonna score. The Royals just like that. Down six to five within one run. Next batter is Bobby Witt Jr. He also hits a grounder on the infields, but this one will get tossed over to first. Royals make it interesting in the ninth, but the Twins hang on to winning, six to five. Over in the National League, the Cardinals come into today on a hot streak of their own. Winners of five in a row. If the Redbirds can get a sixth consecutive victory, that brings their record back up to 500 for the first time since April 16th. Cardinals on the road in Cincinnati. Top of the first inning, no score. Paul Goldschmidt 
hammers this pitch deep to left field, gone for his seventh home run of the year. Cardinals take a one nothing lead. Bottom of the inning, same score until Heimer Candelario drills this one off Lance Lynn the other way. That's a solo shot and it ties the game at one run apiece. Into the second, we're still tied at one, when Will Benson punches this into the opposite field and in the hole off Lynn, that's a single. Nick Martini scores, that's 2-1 Reds. Into the seventh, Reds leading 3-1. Fernando Cruz out of the bullpen is dealing. Gets Dylan Carlson to strike out swinging. Next batter, Nolan Gorman, same exact result. Batter later, Pedro Pajes goes down swinging as well. The Cruz strikes out all five batters he faces. Cardinals get no offense outside of that first inning home run. They lose to the Reds 3-1. And the NBA playoffs continue along tonight. Neither the Eastern nor the Western Conference Finals have been overly competitive thus far. Last night, the Mavericks opened up a three games to none lead on the Timberwolves. Tonight, the Celtics have a chance to sweep the Pacers. Now, despite the series being 3-0 in favor of Boston, two of the very first three games close. The same is true tonight. Pacers and Celtics go down to the wire in game four. Fourth quarter just ending right before we come on the air and the Celtics win it 105 to 102. They advance to the NBA Finals for the second time in the last three years. But is interesting about the way the NBA has set up their finals. No matter what, it starts next Thursday. So no matter how long these series that are just ending now take, the Celtics are going to have nine days of rest before they play in the NBA Finals. You don't see that much in the playoffs. Wow. Hopefully that's not too much rest. You'd think so too, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. We'll be back with more news after this. More than a dozen veterans in the U.S. die by suicide every day. And one New York City-based dance company is hoping to bring that number down. Ahead of Memorial Day, veterans and members of the military are finding healing and telling their stories of war through dance. Fox News correspondent Madeline Rivera has more. In Midtown Manhattan, the sounds of sirens are drowned out by music in the Museum of the Aircraft Carrier Intrepid. Inside Exit 12, a New York City dance company is showcasing performers, even though most of them, Monique. like Monique Arucci, have no background in dance. She was a member of the U.S. Army. In 2004, I deployed to Iraq to 2005, so I was part of Operation Iraqi Freedom too. When she came back home from her tour, the Brooklyn native felt like anything but herself. Anxiety, depression, PTSD. I knew I had to get help myself. Through her treatments with Veterans Affairs, she found out about Exit 12. Dance helps her and other veterans like Army member Jennifer Alvarez, express their pain when words fall short. If I'm feeling heavy or if I'm feeling down or I'm upset or stressed, I always walk out of here as if something has been lifted off my, my chest. Exit 12 knows the struggles of service members because their founder is a veteran too. Ramon Baca was deployed to Fallujah, Iraq with the Marines in 2005. He formed Exit 12 in 2007, looking for a way to release his anger after returning stateside. What was really healing about that is helping people voice their own stories, voice their struggles, and find hope helped me as well. And there is a need. An average of 17 veterans die by suicide every day in the U.S. Baca lost four of his Marines who served with him in Fallujah to suicide. Baca, Arucci, and Alvarez are bonded by service. But now they have a different mission. It's like moving together as a unit. We're doing that here together um, in a space that feels safe because we have one another. Helping veterans regain their footing one beat at a time. Mather Rivera, Fox News. Well, everyone's favorite kung fu fighting panda is back. We take a look at what's new in home entertainment when we return.
A popular dragon warrior, a cultural icon, and a country music legend are among the new digital, DVD, and music releases available to add to your home library. Fox's Ashley Devorkin runs down the list of what's new in home entertainment. It is time to take the next step. Topping this week's list of what's new in home entertainment is the animated adventure Kung Fu Panda 4, with Jack Black and Aquafina voicing a new adventure for Poe as he takes on a shape-shifting sorceress. Reggae is a people music. Bob Marley, One Love, starring Kingsley Benadire, centers on the Jamaican reggae legend's life between 1976 and 1978, highlighting his dedication to spreading a message of peace and unity through music. Daddy has a dog? Mark Wall Wahlberg stars in Arthur the King, a true story about the bond between an adventure racer and the street dog who joins him for a world championship race. How much time do I have? Michael Keaton directed and stars in the thriller Knox Goes Away. He plays a hitman diagnosed with a rapid form of dementia, racing against time to save his estranged son from a vengeance-fueled mistake. I did not kill him. The French legal drama Anatomy of a Fall tells the story of a woman trying to prove her innocence in her husband's death. Sasquatch Sunset centers on a Bigfoot family on a journey to survive the ever-changing world around them. I don't understand. None of it. Russell Crowe is an ex-homicide detective suffering from memory loss and forced to solve an old case in the crime thriller Sleeping Dogs. Beware false prophets. Samuel L. Jackson plays a Chicago detective who travels to Scotland to investigate a series of murders similar to a case he worked on years earlier in the action thriller Damage. For music fans, Tony, Emmy, and Grammy winner Ben Platt releases his third album, Honey Mind. Stranger Things star Maya Hawke also drops her third album, Chaos Angel. And The Border is the 75th album from country music legend Willie Nelson. It's just the border, I guess. In Hollywood, Ashley Dvorkin, Fox News. Only 75 albums. That's our time for tonight. Thanks for joining us. We're going to leave you with video of spider monkeys and their new friends at the San Diego Zoo. Have a great night and an even better tomorrow.